everybody, CT Hippo and Natalie out another adventure. Today we are on Whidbey Island at Fort Eby. This is actually a World War II era coast defense fort and is uh, very much a example of the, uh, the do something philosophy. Um, after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and the one lone submarine that came up the coast, sank the tanker Amidio, fired a few shells at uh, Fort Stevens in Oregon and went home, the American people kind of freaked out and demanded their government do something about protecting the coastline from the Japanese. The government, having the good sense to realize that one submarine was going to do exactly jack and shit, uh, kind of just sort of went through the motions. Initially, they deployed a couple of six-inch towed seacoast artillery guns, um, one near here, near Fort Casey, and another one up at Deception Pass. That was the, the you know, like, do something right away solution. But part of the longer term was um, Fort Eby and a couple other of the coast, small coast defense forts um, in this area. So what's interesting is at its peak, the fort was built in 1942, so you know, right after the right after Pearl Harbor. At its peak, it was uh, armed with two six-inch turreted guns, which is a little less than the armament of a single destroyer. So if an entire fleet shows up, each ship with dozens of large caliber guns, they were going to fight it off with two six-inchers. Sure. That, 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 you can tell that like nobody was really taking this seriously. But, um, you know, it was built nonetheless. The guns were installed. It was manned. It was manned for all four years. Uh, it was built in 1942 and rendered obsolete in 1946. So, yeah, definitely a case of, like, look like we're doing something. The... Architecture is a little different than the Endicott era forts, and uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. So we're here at the entrance. I find it says used 1942 as opposed to built 42. Um, a lot of this is fairly recent, like in the last couple years, the paint here and the lights are definitely a new touch. Up until quite recently, None of these had interior lighting. You had to bring your own. Uh, pipe here. Very likely ventilation. You see the newer plastic conduit. That would be from the recent putting these lights in. Pass through here. I think that goes into the generator room. Doors are wooden construction, shiplap. Walls are still 16 inches thick. A couple of steps down here. If I had to guess, I would say these things on the floor are uh, generator mounts, but I'm not absolutely certain. Being a World War II era fort, everything would have been electric. This hole here, I'm going to guess, held a fan for ventilation. Note the Shredded rubber on the ceiling for noise dampening. Yeah. We've seen that over on the peninsula. We'll pass through here for something. Electrical fittings on the ceiling. Water conduit, maybe? I guess that would make sense. Generators would need some kind of cooling. Yeah. Or possibly fuel. <laughs> A 
light fixture there. Little door with a pass through from the main entrance. And then three blocks here. Again, don't know what they were for. You can see where they used to be some kind of a box mm -hmm, yeah. sealed onto the wall there. Wall and ceiling. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say ventilation maybe. Again, if they were running three generators in an enclosed space like this, you really have to worry about vapor buildup. Hmm? Yeah. And then these are creosoted wooden beams with, I have to suspect, pipe hangers on them. And then at the end of this is the large round hole into what we're presuming is the generator room. So, best guess is this is all part of the ventilation system. Drew air in one side and pushed it out, the, pushed the exhaust gases out the other. Yeah, that's my guess. Is there, maybe each one of these rectangular holes here was an exhaust pipe from a generator? So you have three exhaust pipes coming out plus a big room blower. So which make, you know, this is the outlet trunk. I mean, it's okay, it's all wild ass guesses here, but. There's the outside. Yeah, see I think each one of these each one of these plinths lines up with a hole in the wall there. Yeah. So I would guess that the exhaust stacks ran out there see, yeah. onto those creosoted um, pipe hangers yeah. and then vented outside. And the big hole there in the wall was uh, was a room fan. So these were probably um, transformers on these. Yeah, these beds here. So there's a light switch there, so who knows. And then the power, you see the fittings in the ceiling for the, to hang the conduits. I don't think I've ever been in this part of this one before. I think it was closed off last time I was here. So these holes in the doors are probably also for ventilation. It draws, draws negative pressure from the whole facility into there and exhausts it all outside. Don't know if the no smoking signs are original or not. 
can hear the, the difference in acoustics yeah. once we get out of the, the areas that have been soundproofed. So there's that pass through. And then these little tubes here through the wall would have been for power distribution cables. Welded shut. That's annoying. So this battery included two six inch guns and so I'm going to assume that it's a symmetrical the one on each side. So the only other place we've seen that kind of soundproofing was at um, the one in Flagler where they had the, the hydrophone station yeah. and the one there at Warden who was part of the fire control system. So I suspect that this may, that may also have been part of some kind of a sub, uh, sonar system. Which given the concern about submarines would make sense that that was a hydrophone station. Or maybe the generators were just really loud. Small room. One thing that didn't change much from the Endicott era was the construction method of concrete walls with wooden boards over them that they could nail into to build doors and windows and things. Gutter there that provides for drainage. T-shaped room with a light fixture. Another small room. It seems unlikely they'd have another generator in here. So I wonder if this might have been like a fire control plotting room. This would be the, I guess, west entrance. We came in the north entrance, I guess. Yes, north entrance. So this is the west, and we'll go see the east side of things. Oh, that's true, we didn't. Should go do that. So this is the main hall, and then that's where we came in. Pretty much just a mirror image of the other side.
Another T-shaped room. And here we have the east entrance. And then as we proceed out the entrance, we come to the pit for the gun itself. The board here would have been where the telephones would have been to call in firing corrections. And the gun itself was a uh, six inch barbette mount, single barrel, in a rotating mount. The fog's lifted a little bit so you can see out over the Straits of Juan de Fuca there. And observation, and I believe searchlight tower down there. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. don't know if these were originally painted in this camouflage scheme or if that's a recent add-on. These armored boxes here probably would have contained shells. So this would have been your ready storage ammunition and then more inside. So we're just outside the west entrance. Same configuration, ready storage rack, telephone box, and here's the uh, pit for the other gun. The guns would have had pretty good field of fire, but would have been only one would be able to be used at a time over much of the arc. A little bit of a limitation there. Let's go see what that thing is. So here we are about to reach the uh, lower observation point. Swing around and look back up at the fort. Where the uh, orange hat is there, that was the battery that we were just at. And the uh, underground portion is in that hill right there. The other gun being over there by those stairs. Uh, much like the disappearing rifles at Casey, you never know this was here unless you were looking for it. To give a little perspective, uh, Fort Casey is just around the corner to the left over there. Straight ahead is Marlstone Island where Fort Flagler is and Fort Warden is on that hill right there. So we are just outside of the Triangle of Fire here. And let's see what this is. Tell the influence of technology how much better protected from air attack this is than the uh, Endicott area ones were. Let's see if there's a way into it without a whole bunch of crawling I don't want to do. Well, that actually looks easy enough. You want to come point this at me? Smile away, 
boy. And here we are. Some light going on here. So there's a stand here where a azimuth telescope would have been. And just a very small slit looking out over the, uh, the coast. Roofs, I don't know, eight inches thick concrete. Very basic, very minimalist, but you know, suitable for the time. So, now let's see if I can get back out of here. So this poorly marked and rather unimpressive site is the where the mast for the radar was. Uh, this 4DB had an early model SCR something, I have to look up what it is, uh, search and targeting radar. And these foundations in the ground with the bolts sticking up were what held the antenna up. This is uh, campsite number 10 in uh, the Fort E.B. camping area. Over here is the foundation of one of the buildings, probably the receiver building. We had to go through quite a bit to find this. Uh, it was mentioned on Fort Wiki, but as you can see, there's no signage about it. And the campsites are not well marked. But, uh, oh, there's the water pipe. But yeah, if you don't mind a little bit of trekking, you can find the old radar site. Or at least what's left of it. So that concludes our brief trip through Fort E.B. It's January, it's raining, it's uh, only recently gotten above freezing, so we haven't been doing a lot of adventures, but uh, hopefully we'll get the cobwebs shaken off and do some more soon. One thing I've always wondered about these coast defense forts in World War II is who was stationed here? Was this the where they sent the aging reservists? Was it the near do wells they didn't trust with anything important? Was it uh, the congressman's son that they didn't want to get killed off in some island in the Pacific? Because even at the times it was built, nobody was really taking this very seriously. And so, it really does beg the question, who, uh, who served here? But, that's a question for another day. Until then, let's go have an adventure. Yeah.